Hey y'all, welcome back for part three of our little mini series with Dr. Campbell. So I want us to talk to you about why we've been focusing on female physique research and kind of how that's different than a lot of other labs. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, most, not a lot I would say of research is focused on males. Uh, the only place that females are really overrepresented is the dieting population, which usually, which makes sense. Uh, more females will diet than males typically. Uh, so that's where a lot of the research with women is overweight females dieting. But just in general, males have dominated research. And a lot of that honestly comes down to hormones. Uh, think about it from a logical perspective. So we ran into this with my study. Um, you can have massive weight fluctuations as a female uh, during your menstrual cycle or just around that time hormonally. And now we have uh, some body water machines, but when I did my study, we didn't. So you, can you explain how the ultrasound picks up like water versus like lean body mass and muscle and, and all that? Yeah, so when we did your study, we, we, we used a two compartment model, which is basically how much fat do you have and how much muscle do you have? What we were not able to do then, which we are now, is we are, we are now able to estimate how much total body water you have. Mm -hmm. So if a female, or even a male, but typically if a female is retaining more water, we will pick that up and mm -hmm. we'll say, hey, let's make sure we don't count this as, as lean muscle mass. Yeah, let's, it's let's basically take that just out. Fat, fat free mass. So fat free mass is obviously water and muscle. So, but if you have, and some females spike a lot more than others. So I have clients that I know like will fluctuate five, six pounds, you know, in a week, some people it's only a pound. So it can be very different, but there, you know, that's not something that you can control in the research. So that's why I would assume that that's why a lot of people probably never use females, right? For, it's one of, it's one of the reasons, yeah. the fact that you, sh that you have to work around the menstrual cycle, mm -hmm. And or then, if you don't, that you just, it's a limitation of yeah, your study. You have design. to write it in there like this is, you know, a limitation. And every study has limitations, um, but it can skew things when you are looking at lean body mass in particular. So that can be really frustrating, but thankfully we do have the body water uh, machine now. So then we can look at that, get like a better full picture. Um, yeah. I, I think that's like a really cool addition. And it'll, it doesn't take very long, right? I mean, it's not. No, I mean, the actual assessment takes about 12 seconds. Now, what we do is we have them lay down for 10 minutes before the assessment so that all of the oh, water yeah. equilibrates okay. throughout their body. So that We're there, there's so not big shifting. Words. <laughs> equilibrate. <laughs> and this is a science <laughs> This video. is a science video, so we have to use all the big words yeah. and be super esoteric. Um, but so that's a really big quality of our lab that's a little bit different. Um, we've done, we did the last study that we talked about in part two of the video series was the protein and female physique training study. Um, so that was all females, but a lot of the, the research that we've done has always been like mixed, which again, is not typical. Um, it's becoming more normal, I would probably say, um, than it was in the past, but it's definitely something like when you called me before I was even here, you were like, I want to focus on this. So we've definitely are building a interesting culture, I would say of in, like people who are aspiring to either be in fitness competitions or like how that looks. Um, and it's just completely changing. Like when you called me and you wanted to do that, when I was leaving undergrad, it was still at the point where I was one of the main people who worked, like there was literally a few girls who worked out and at my gym. And I was, this was obviously several years ago. And I was like, I don't know what Dr. Campbell wants to do like this. I mean, I'm all for it, <laughs> but I'm just not seeing it. And then as the years have progressed, there's, I would say, almost an equal amount of females training than there are males. Uh, maybe not everywhere, but a lot of places. Like you go to the school gym and there's not just guys anymore. Like there's a lot of females. Almost everyone knows about what a bikini competition is, even if they don't want to do it. They know yeah, someone. Aware. Yeah, they at least know someone who maybe has done it before. Um, so it's really, really cool that we've been able to kind of focus that. And what was the other thing that you said with sometimes the funding with the... Yeah, so in typically or historically, dietary supplement companies who will fund a lot of resistance training research aren't willing to fund female-based resistance training studies. Traditionally, most of the dollars spent are from the male consumer. Mm -hmm. or the, 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 the purchases are made by yeah. males. So that's been limiting in the past for, mm -hmm. for supplement companies to 
focus on female research. Yeah, focus on it or be willing to fund it. Yeah, I would um, say probably in the next few years that'll probably change just because of how like big of a shift in the sports supplement market. So the other cool thing about our program is that we are trying to focus on female physique research, but we're also trying to focus on female scientists in general. Yeah, so I was just, I mean, Lauren was kind of the trailblazer in this regard. We've, over the years now, we've had several <laughs> females that that I try to actively recruit to come here because if, if you look at the exercise science field, at least in academia or universities, it's very male dominated. Mm -hmm. So we have, we focus on females as research subjects trying to do female based studies, but also on the other side of the, of the equation, the, the research design phase, trying to get more females involved in designing studies, be becoming exercise scientists. So it's a, it, this, this university and my lab in particular is, is very embracing of females getting involved in yeah. physique research or sports supplement research, resistance training research. Yeah, it's been really cool. And uh, I know, like you mentioned, two of the other girls in my age, like in my group, um, are go have gone off to do PhDs. And then one of my best friends, Danielle, is also now in the master's program as well. So she's going to be doing her research uh, this year, which I'm super excited about. Can we tell the topic? Sure. This, I mean, let me just preface it. <laughs> this is going to be big. This is going to be almost as big as like the flexible dieting study. Oh, bigger. Oh. <laughs> no, this is, yeah, this is a pretty, we're doing, well, we're, Danielle and is doing a study on refeeds. Oh my God. I'm so excited. If you're not excited, then stop watching. But no, honestly, we, we, we had like that little meeting that one day and like, it was just so, it got me so excited because we've, really there's no refeed studies and uh eric helms has been talking about this for years and he's like i don't know why nobody's done one yet um and watch part one of our yeah. video okay well yeah watch part one of the the video series um but it's it's been something that a lot of the people in the field have been talking about for a while and it's just been completely ignored so we are here to help y'all and if you have dieted and you have wondered about refeeds or you know there's all different ways to do it there's one day refeeds there's two day refeeds there's consecutive refeeds there's every three days you do one or fourth day there's binge days there's cheat day. i mean there's so many different ways to have calorie cycling basically carb cycling however you want to call it for the refeed day we have very limited research so i'm super i'm like so excited for this and I know you guys are too. Yeah, so. this is just another study in the series of just practical physique based research. Yep. That, and and Danielle has been working hard. I mean it's Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. And yeah, that I think practical is our our thing. Uh, there's a lot of research that's that's great um, that isn't as practical as we'd all like it to be. So that is definitely the focus of I would say our lab. Yes. Uh, Can you take lie. the results and yeah. apply it to your training and nutrition today? I always say our, like I'm still here. I always call you my advisor. You're not my advisor anymore, <laughs> but you're always going to be my advisor. This is always going to be my school. So um, if you guys want to learn more about USF. Uh, one, contact <laughs> me. Uh, my email is bcampbell at usf.edu. My Instagram is bcampbell. Yeah. <laughs> PhD. Next year, I promise he'll be more on that. We are working on his social media uh, in the next few months. Yes, Lauren is one of my mentors <laughs> with getting my my message out there. He has so much great knowledge, and there is a lot of bad information on the internet. So we need to get some more good people, um, and you're definitely going to be one of them. So yeah, if, thank you. If you think that this is interesting research. If you've thought about getting a master's, we have the undergrad program too as well. Yes. Um, so if you're looking to get an undergrad um, or you're looking to get a master's, uh, this is definitely the place. If you're interested in this type of research, like there's really nowhere else that would be as applied in the research sense uh, that we know of, honestly. So. Yeah, like you said, very applied, very practical. So mm -hmm. the, the questions that you have, I'd like to think we're doing research to answer those questions. Yes. So thank you so much, Dr. Campbell, for yes, um, thank you. you know taking part in this little series. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, as you guys know, I like doing more informative videos with great guests, so I couldn't have thought of a better person. I don't know why we haven't done this before. Actually, Ryan was like, why don't you do videos with Dr. Campbell? I was like, why have I not done that? Like, oh my gosh. So uh, finally, we got a few videos out. So hopefully you guys like this. Comment below. Love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much.